so here we are talking about um, secants and we talked about first of all the chords and how we worked with those but now we have what's called a secant segment now we know a secant is a line that contains a chord so a secant segment has one endpoint on the circle and the other endpoint outside so it still contains a chord so NP is the chord the secant that's going to contain it is going to be on the outside well we also have what's called the external secant segment and what we're talking about is this little part in the exterior it's part of the secant but it's on the outside of the circle, not on the interior. So therefore you have your chord and your exterior portion. So here we also have JM is your other exterior or external secant segment. I always say exterior or outside when I look at that, or external. I just kind of forget to the external secant segment. I just call it the exterior. But the one of the terms that we're going to use for the next one is we're going to have the exterior and we're going to have the word the whole. And what I mean by that, the whole, I mean the length there should be a space there, sorry about that, of the secant segment. And I want the whole segment, okay, from beginning to end. So we're going to use those to help us out on the next one. So let's flip this one over. Okay, so on this one, we have what's called the secant secant product theorem. So again, we have multiplication going to happen. And this is what it says. If two secants intersect in the exterior of a circle, then the product of the lengths of one secant segment and its external segment equals the product of the lengths of the other secant segment and its external segment. Like, what in the world is this saying? So what this is saying is that I'm taking my exterior segment, so the exterior, times the length of the whole thing. So you have the exterior times the whole. Equals the exterior segment on the other one so we get the exterior again, times the whole other secant. So we call this exterior times the whole equals exterior times the whole. So let's label this up again. Let's call this one A and B. And this would be C and D. So what I mean by that is the exterior portion is A times the length of the whole thing, well that's A plus B, equals the exterior which is C times the length of the whole thing, C plus D right so that's the exterior times the whole the exterior times the whole it's a great easy way of keeping track of these so let's do a couple of the problems applying this theorem okay find the value of x in the length of length of each secant segment so on this one I think again exterior times the length of the whole thing so we got 8 times the whole thing which is going to be what x plus 8 equals the exterior which is 7 times the length of the whole thing, which is 7 plus 9, which is 16. So I'm going to go get 8x plus 64 equals 7 times 16. 8x plus 64 is equal to what's 7 times 16? My brain cells are fried, so it's not helping me here very much. Let me get there to that point. Where is my stuff? All right, 7 times 16, we got 2. Carry the 4, so it should be 112. Okay, got to make sure I do my math right here. All right, now after that, we're going to go sit there and subtract 64 from both sides, all right? So we get 8x is equal to 48. Divide both sides by 8, x is equal to 6. So that's the length of the um, secant segment. Now, someone yelled at me earlier and say, you know, oops, find the value of, and we're just going to say the variable because I use two different letters here, not just x. Now I have to so plug it in for this length of each secant segment. Plug it in, plug it in. Right, guys? Or formally we say substitution. So here on that, the length of segment GE is 6 plus 8, which equals 14. And we have the length of segment DE, which is just 9 plus 7, which we already knew earlier, is 16. Okay, do the same type of idea here. We have the exterior times the length of the whole thing. So we got 13 times the length of 13 plus z is equal to the exterior 9 times the length of the whole thing, 30 plus 9. So I get 169 plus 13z equals 9 times 39. Well, what's 9 times 39 in this case? It should be 351. All right. So now I subtract 169 from both sides. We're going to get 3z is going to equal, I think it's 182. Double check my math. Divide by 3. Oh, excuse me, divide by 13. I dropped my 13 there. Oh, did any of you start screaming at the video because I did that? I hope so. All right, let's divide by 13. 
z is going to equal 14. Now we just got to plug it into the two segments. Segment gj is 14 plus 13, which is 27. And lg, we already know, is 30 plus 9, which is 39. So those are the length of the segments, our variables. Not too bad. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to get the last um, theorem and the practice problems.